Soon these stalls will be filled with livestock and this grandstand packed with people as it's once again fair time in Vandenberg County. The 71st annual Vandenberg County 4-H Fair officially opens Tuesday afternoon at 3 o'clock. But for the past week, exhibitors and fair officials have been putting the final touches on this event for all ages. Kids play a major role out here. And they have bubble, bubble gum blowing contest. They have a watermelon eating con or watermelon contest. Uh, they have a pie eating contest one day. Frog jumping contest. So all during the day, the 4-H is having uh, their activities going on. The fair will feature its traditional events, such as the ATV races, the Queen contest, livestock and project judging, the demolition derby, tractor pull, and of course, plenty of food, rides, and entertainment. With Steve Werner performing on Friday night and Lee Greenwood on Saturday, with a special tribute to members of the military. The 4-H officials sent out special passes to over 300 area servicemen and women so that they could see the show free of charge. We've invited the whole family to come out. Uh, most of them will be wearing fatigues or their uniform, and so if you have a chance, stop and say thanks for a job well done. We're really proud of them. The last two years have brought record crowds out to see the fair, and soon these gates will be packed once again. Admission to get in is $4, and children under 10 are free. And fair officials say that weather permitting, this year will be the best yet. From the Vanderbilt County 4-H Fairgrounds, Kendall Cummings, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Slater, who was in 1982, Ms. Vanderbilt County. Tony is the son of Randy and Angie Cleeg, to Jewelry Shop, born in Western Wear, McDonald's Photography, Bustler Enterprises, yes. and working in their younger 4-H now. And Aaron is also three years old. Please make welcome once again Ms. Vanderbilt County for 1991 Miss Lisa Ford. Thank you. activity going on this evening in just a few plenty of food available. There's a lot of great activities going on all the rest of the week so we hope you enjoy it. It's been my privilege to Welcome to the 4-H Livestock Shows at Vanderburgh County's Fair. Over 100 4-H members showed their livestock to potential buyers. The trick to getting a good sales price, show well in competition. Well, you mainly keep your eye on the judge and do pretty good showing and keep your pig clean, don't scar it up and things like that. Youngsters from 10 years old on up to 19 participated in the sale. Auctioneer Hugh Miller led the way. Some of the livestock sales included pigs, cattle, and chickens. Usually your grand champion takes home the biggest sale, but this year in beef sales, the reserve champ garnered more money. Mine was a little heavier than the grand champion one by, I don't know how many pounds it was, but it was just a little heavier that sometimes will do it, you know, they want more. It's Livestock shows and the final sale are a tradition at the 4-H fair, and the kids don't bring home just bucks for the beef, they receive an education in agriculture. It's been a, a real learning experience, you know, I was a country boy and, and I learned a whole lot through 4-H, you know, if nothing else, confidence, and I think that still exists today. The kids just feel better about themselves when they, when they do well. What do you get when you put your head, heart, hands, and health together? You get 4 H's in a clover that stand for the National Youth Organization whose slogan is to learn by doing. And the members of this group and their families have been doing just that for years. 
whole 4-H program, it gives kids projects to work with and, you know, it keeps them off the streets and they got, uh, younger kids have got to have things to do also. Well, um, I like to go on the rides and um, leading the calf is real fun and um, it's pretty much really fun. The fair is a special time for 4-Hers of all ages. However, it's the young that really get a chance to shine. These young people work together on different projects and have meetings once a month. The fair is definitely the main event. It's kind of the wrap-up of the year. Um, after the fair is over, clubs kind of die down and then they start up again then at the beginning of the year. The hard work and dedication from all shows when over 2,000 projects will come together at this year's festivities. With the fair ending on Saturday, these cute little bunnies won't be around long. However, 4-H officials say there are many more activities scheduled throughout the year. At the Vandenberg County Fair, Gina Reinerson, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. All the animals here have been groomed and fed in preparation for the Vandenberg County Fair and all of their care has been coming from teenagers. But don't be fooled, taking an animal to the fair isn't an easy task. Well, you have to share them and wash them and trim them. And it's really an all year thing because you got to feed them and raise them and everything. It's, it just takes a lot of work. With all the time and effort that goes into preparing for the 4-H fair, some people might wonder why these students do it. But the teenagers we talked to felt that it was well worth the effort. The many helps a lot with college and my car that I got and everything. It teaches you to take responsibility and, and uh, learn a lot about raising animals and that's, that's good for everybody really. After the animals have been judged and the ribbons have been distributed, it's time for the owner and animal to part. On Friday, the animals are auctioned off at the livestock sale and for some, the separation is difficult. I try not to think about it. I try not to get attached, but sometimes you just do. It gets hard. Goodbye is never easy, but there's no time to grieve because soon these teens will have to prepare for next year's fair. With this week's Youth Report, Nicole Borey, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. What do you think about the fair? It has all the makings of the county fair. The animals. <laughs> the grandstand activities. And of course, the rides. The same rides that Kristen Hoffling and Shelly Teepool hop on every year. And they say this year is no different. Well, I like the ones that are there all the time because they have the inspectors that come and these, they just put them up real quick and they could have, they could miss something and have problems. Yeah, it does concern me a little bit, but I kind of, I go anyway, they're fun. <laughs> yeah, I kind of trust them a little bit. Well, I know on the Tempest here, the little chains that hold you, they don't hold you. You slide just one side to the other and you'll probably have bruises when you get off. But it's not a question of safety, it's just having fun for me. Fair officials say DP Amusement conducted a strict inspection before the fair and will do a follow-up every day. Families with small children like the Mosleys say safety is having a good time while still being sensible. We feel pretty safe bringing them out here. Uh, you know, we don't let them go on the bigger rides. We like let them go on the small rides, but there's always a chance of danger, which you get that if you walk out the door. So I guess we'll just go out here and live a little. Christine Dobbin, News 25 in Vandenberg County. Inside, okay, what's your name? The competitors, 75 youngsters proud to proclaim themselves full of hot air. Okay. The ammo, a juicy chunk of bubblicious bubblegum. 
As for pre-competition strategy, a wide variety, from gum air temperature equalization to chew and show and chew and show and chew and show. How much do you think you need to chew it up to make it soft enough for a good bump? Okay, if you probably 15 a times, a lot, probably about 60 or 50 times. The rules: two chances to blow your biggest bubble. Lady with the ruler makes the call. Oh, that was two and a quarter. Whoa! That was one and a quarter. Okay. One and a what happened? I don't know. I know how to blow bubbles, but I just didn't know what happened today. That one popped. It got you pretty good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It got in my nose. Of course, blowing a biggie ahead of time and trying to hang on to it is clearly out of bounds. But wait till you hear about the ones that got away. The biggest bubble I ever broke was like that big. About that big. All this bubble blowing got me wondering if I still had it in me. So here we go. Okay, you gotta be three quarters. Four inches. Four inches! Not bad. That was a good one. Good, but not good enough. The winning bubble tipped the ruler at five inches. Try scraping that off your lip. Kathy Pribble, News 25 at the Vandenberg County Fair. just like getting dirty. Um, it's a lot of fun when the queens join us and they get all dirty and people like to see that. It was great. <laughs> um, me and the queen attendants and the Miss Young Miss, um, we just were competing against each other and I think I won. <laughs> it's hard, sort of, but it's fun. It's very messy. I've been practicing for it um, when we eat watermelon. Somebody um, wiped it off. What would you have to say to anybody else that would want to do this? Um, swallow the seeds. The things that we did different this year is we had a veterans recognition um, prior to the concert on Wednesday night and I think that that drew in a crowd of people who per perhaps had not come to the fair before. Container that we put ice in and cold rags in case we have somebody that's been exposed to the heat, have a little bit of problems dealing with the heat, then we can get them cooled down immediately. Ah, the unmistakable sound of metal grinding, pushing fairgoers every which way. But long before these rides go into action, the ride's operators go over every nut and bolt to make sure your experience is a safe one. We follow David Miles, general manager of DPMU. Yeah. See, that's a, that's a, that's got a, a uh, little camel back in it that makes it lock into place. As he goes over the precautions his workers take every day. Takes that, that ladder up the side of the tower and he gets up in there and he checks the hydraulic fittings on the drive motor and inside that tube. All these rides are portable so keeping the rides level as they shift into their new home he says is top priority. And they check them pads underneath there and then the vents start to settle we got hydraulic rams that can come down we can pick the ride back up and re-level it. It's so critical, he says, operators check the ride stability throughout its use all day. While the ride's running, the operator will walk around. The second man on the ride will walk around and just kick a blocker. For rides like the Tilt-A-Whirl, he says, because it has more working parts, the check is more in-depth. 
we have two operators that, under this ride. They start in the center and check the pins all the way out the outside, and then they check and make sure this blocking hasn't sunk down in the ground. They actually get in there and do Yeah, it? they'll crawl all the way. Want to get on the inside and want to get on the outside, and they'll make, as a team, crawl all the way around the ride. But aside from the mechanics, operators make sure each rider is secure as well. well how much time do you put in the checking the safety belts and the safety Every ratchets? day. That's all every day. Every single ride, every single seat on a ride? Yes, sir. In fact, before each ride is put into motion, his workers double check to make sure each rider is securely fastened and as safe as they can be. Some parents insist on buckling their own child in, but the operators still come back behind them and give that seatbelt a little tug, make sure it's 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 snapped in tight. And your ride experience is where, where? of any dangers. There may be a lot of mud at the Vanderburg County Fair, but Indiana Governor hopeful Mitch Daniels says he's keeping mud slinging out of his campaign as he mingles with fairgoers. But I think you can make the case for change in a positive way and in a way that is never a personal, and I'm determined to do that. But among the prize winning pigs and the large crowds, there are voters, citizens the Republican hopes to reach. But number one, you can't understand the problems and opportunities uh, of this very diverse state if you don't go out and see for yourself. And number two, it's important, I think, to say, look, in our comeback, everybody matters. Daniels looks back on his day at the fair and says it wasn't just about politics. You know, fairs are for fun, and uh, I talked to much, many more people in there about their, you know, kid in 4-H or um, uh, where to get the, uh, uh, the best pork shop than I did about politics. Lochran hasn't missed a race for 10 years. He says the mud, the motors, and the mania is too thrilling. I just like it because it's fun. It's interesting to see people smash other cars up. Over the years, more and more people have come out for the races, and today that number could be even higher. The crowd will probably be up tonight because last night was the first night that they had a rain out, and they had to actually not have the tractor pulls, which is not good for the fares, but unfortunately Mother Nature stepped in and took over. So I imagine that'll bring a lot of people out tonight that maybe not have got to see a show last night. And for first-time driver Andy Martin, that sea of people makes today a little more nerve-wracking. Shaking like a leaf. Shaking like a leaf. Not having to worry about them being angry, not have to worry about insurance, not have to worry about anything, but just go out there and have fun. Nervousness aside, Martin smashes his way into the next round. I had a blast, and uh, I don't know that I may never get to this again, but this one time there's going to be a lot of memories for it. Tiffany Fenwick says she's been coming to this demolition derby since she was a baby. Now she's bringing her babies. She says they came to the grandstand seven hours early today to claim top row seats, keeping a safe distance from the mayhem. Yeah. Not really sitting up here. Sometimes down there in the front, it does get a little scary. Organizers say one thing they did to keep cars from going into the audience was putting up this wall between the stands and the arena. We also have what they call berms that go around the arena that keeps the, the cars away from that concrete. 
Uh, so it, it, there's a protection there. People in the audience told me it did make them feel protected from the potentially dangerous event. I'm not worried much about it. I mean, there's pre there's a barrier there, so that helps. The Vanderburg County Sheriff's Office was also there, making sure no one was walking too close to the cars or sitting on the walls. We set up a perimeter in the area, allow uh, people to pass back and forth across from the pit areas. With one goal in mind. We try to keep them out of harm's way. He says emergency crews with ambulances and life flights were on standby, but did not have to be used tonight. But the fire crews did come in handy. While I was there, a small fire broke out on one of the derby cars, but they put it out quickly and no one was injured. We may perceive certain people as leaders. All of us can be leaders by making a difference and by doing the right thing and standing up for what is right. Am I doing it right? Am I doing it right?